It's been three years since the Deep Horizon oil spill spewed nearly five million barrels of oil into the Gulf of Mexico. It could turn out to be the worst environmental disaster in more than 20 years. Thousands of gallons of crude oil are oozing into the Louisiana coastal waters ten days now after that oil rig exploded in the Gulf of Mexico. Oil continues to slowly creep into Louisiana's wetlands. The effects of the spill and its changes to the ocean's ecosystem are still being determined. That's where Florida State geochemist Jeff Chanton comes in. He's part of a large group of scientists studying the aftermath of the oil spill. And I look at carbon cycling in the natural earth, and I have a number of projects that range from the permafrost to peatlands to gas hydrates in the deep sea. And then, of course, it was a natural for me to get involved in this oil spill research. Chanton and other collaborators from six universities are researching a new phenomenon that's emerged since the oil spill. It's a process they're calling the dirty blizzard. Right around the same time as the oil spill, there is this massive sedimentation event, about tenfold increase in the rate of sediment accumulation out in the deep Gulf of Mexico. And there is this red layer that was deposited over the sediments, and nobody knew what that was, and there was a lot of speculation that it might be oil. Chen says the researchers call it the dirty blizzard because the oil seems to be forcing the particles, including some plankton, that normally float near the top of the water to fall to the sea floor. It resembles a blizzard of dirt. It's something they've never seen before, and so naturally it's piqued the interest of inquisitive scientists like Chan. One thing, it's just a very interesting event, you know, and it's never been observed before. So we have this basic scientific curiosity about what happened. And the other reason for exploring the dirty blizzard is to find out just what it means for the ocean. And then the other part of this is, well, where is the oil? You know, we'd like to do an oil budget and see you know, how much of it is on the seafloor. So to find out what's down thousands of feet beneath the ocean surface, Chanton and his fellow researchers are using a series of hollow cylinders called multicores. They're lowered to the seafloor and scoop up the sediment for study. Contraptions, I guess you'd have to call them. They're pretty wild looking contraptions. They have several of these samples and the research is underway to see just how much oil and particles are now on the ocean floor. The goal is to determine how it could affect the ocean. Chanton is excited to be a part of this important work, and he says the research will help understand the oil spill, but it could also help his students research future disasters. You know, having people doing research at the university is very important because it keeps knowledge fresh and alive, and it keeps people thinking. You know, it, it turns it from an exercise in just rote memorization into an exercise in discovery. And they could be close to discovering just what lies on the bottom of the sea. Chanton says they're close to finishing their studies and they're preparing to publish the findings. This is Florida State Headlines. I'm Mark Vaughn. Florida State Headlines is a production of the Florida State Office of University Communication. You have allowed them to destroy the entire planet. Well, and here's a little more information in case you're not quite sure whether you need to shut down corporations like BP or not. But greater than that, are you ready to start changing your life so that you're not dependent on their evil? Three years after the BP Moncondo well disaster, the Gulf of Mexico is still covered in oil and barely sustaining visible life above or below the surface. Undisclosed white matter is appearing and leakages with other drill sites appears to be problematic. Uh, with such a massive dead zone, it makes you wonder how long oil rigs will negligently be spewing toxins in the rig disaster wasn't part of a long-term plan to expand the dead zone to include the entire Gulf of Mexico. Do something. Make some changes somewhere, somehow. Because there's not a lot of this earth left that's usable. And you've got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, upon all the apparatus, and you've got to make it stop. And you've got to indicate to the people who run it, to the people who